Welcome back to the Kaijusaurus Podcast, the podcast in which a lifelong fan of Godzilla and Kaiju movies watches and reviews all 30 plus films in the Godzilla canon with uh, with my friend, Ross Menzies. <laughs> Are there any other qualifiers for that? And you could say... Your handsome friend? Your, your handsome, my handsome, engaged, bespectacled... Cool guy friend. Cool guy, Hawaiian shirt wearing friend. Yeah, that, that's about it. Water drinking. You may also be interested to know that I am a newbie to the Godzilla film that's... franchise and each film we watch is a new discovery to me. And with each film he becomes less of a newbie. That's true. Rendering my purity. the modus operandi of this podcast. Null moot and void. Yes. I'm not pure anymore. I'm, I'm dirtied. <laughs> Well, Godzilla purity is an important well, uh, now part of the fandom, of course. Now that we've got the Heisei movies out of the way, maybe you can become pure again. Yes. Because these have sullied and dirtied you. Uh, can we do a... Are we going to do... I was going to say, maybe we could do a, you know, a quiz like you did for the show. I don't Shoah, fucking want but to. But that would involve you having to watch the movies again I to like, find up questions. I do not want to... Like, Lull on these movies anymore yeah. than you <laughs> yeah. have to. Because... I feel like in our reviews of all the Heisei films post Godzilla vs King Ghidorah, so that's vs Mothra vs Mechagodzilla 2 vs Space Godzilla and now vs Destroyer, we've been bringing up a lot of the same points and complaints yeah. and etc etc, which is indicative of how repetitive this run of movies is. We must sound is. like broken records, eh? <laughs> but um, before we get on to you know, the, the official the chat, etc. What's up? How are you? Are you oh, good? I'm good, Stephen. Uh, I've enjoyed my summer so far. Uh, I got really, really comically sunburned a little while ago. I'm um, better now. Um, now, the way that I, I don't tan, I go bright red, uh, like painfully beacon style bright red. <laughs> and then the second that that's done, I don't stay like, you know, nice, like tanned. I just go straight back to like. Tasty white. Do you do you crisp in between? No. No. Oh no 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 no. I, flake. I, I, I'm I'm yeah. flaking a little bit, but like I don't look tanned at all. I don't look like no. I've got any sun. No, I've just gone good. back to white. Yeah. Um, but no, I was I was like I learned recently. See, I didn't actually realise this, but when you sunburn, like your skin is still cooking. Oh, you're still God. you know like your piece of meat that's still <laughs> cooking. So even two days later, I was still like my neck was humming with heat. It's not a good look. Char it's not grilled. a good feeling. Ah, you know, you could genuinely crack an egg on the back of my neck and it would fry and you could eat it. Should offer that as a viewer's prize. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, we'll do a special raffle. A raw egg. A, 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 a reg. <laughs> a, a rogue? Oh, there's... How are you, Stephen? <laughs> a rogue. <laughs> How has your summer been? Oh, it's been fine. Yeah. Tell me one thing you've done. Oh, um, this. <laughs> ah, fair, fair, fair. Um... Should we just dive in? I'm feeling like diving in. I feel this has been a nice, brisk... Let's not cur- oh, I don't want to say curt. We've not been curt. We've yeah. been brisk, friendly, polite, to the point. We have. Let's, so let's make things continue happen. continue to the point. We can have banter afterwards. We, post-banter. Yeah. yeah. Post- Post-show. Banter. Post- backstage. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. The last five to ten minutes of each podcast, we shall rename the backstage segment. Where we chat, we talk, we talk about our days, our lives, films we've watched... So we the watched subject of the, 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 we watched a film today. <laughs> we watched the last in the Heisei run of Godzilla movies, 1995's Godzilla vs. Destroyer, directed by Takao Okawara and written by written by oh, who was it? Kazuki Omori, who directed Violent and King Ghidorah. And okay, stuff. yeah, so it's the same kind of creative team. Yes, or uncreative <laughs> team. <laughs> That's actually not indicative of what I felt of the movie, which I will. Uh, get to in a minute yeah but like yeah okay but, yeah. Um, for the other films yeah Aliens uh, so Godzilla vs Destroyer the final run in this series of so Godzilla films what's going on with the end of the Heisei period why um, is it the end of the Heisei period well we're making way for something on the horizon a non-Japanese hmm. production interesting I'm sure this will be Critically, but and we'll, we'll, fan and acclaimed. We'll, but we'll get there. The fandom loves it. We'll get there. Um, but you know, after this kind of dire returns of Space Godzilla, you know, it's, it was seen. You know, that series should go out in something of a high, or a, and you know, I don't exactly. I personally don't exactly see this film as a high. It's it. 
uh, vaguely redeems this run of movies after the tripe of Mechagodzilla 2 and Space Godzilla. It, it's it's a cut above those. Yeah, I would but, say so. you know. <clears throat> so, the big marketing fucking thing for, I'm struggling today with finding with words. To articulate things. That's okay. We're the trying. Big, the big marketing slant for this movie was Godzilla dies. Ah. Uh-huh. Oh, really? Did they say is, that? Yeah, that's literally the tagline for the movie. In huge, big... In huge big characters, Godzilla dies. Oh, wow. Spoilers. Spoilers, like. But, you know, it's the whole plot of the movie, basically. Yeah. So, Godzilla returns again. Um, his core radiation temperature has now reached such levels that uh, a nuclear meltdown is imminent, which threatens the entire planet. If mm-hmm. Godzilla was to melt down or explode or whatever, um, it could potentially destroy the Earth as we know it. Um, combating this as ever is G Force. Our beloved Mickey. With My Mickey, beloved Mickey. Mickey Sagusa. And m- meanwhile, there is a scientist who's researching micro oxygen, and he comes across um, a creature which was unleashed by the activation of the oxygen destroyer back in 54 um, called Destroyer, which is a micro oxygen aid creature which has. Claws and shit. It has claws and a little, and, a little, a little sticky out. Yeah, it has the, an alien tongue. The tongue yeah. thing. Um, and so, and Godzilla, little Godzilla, formerly baby Godzilla, basically Heisei Menela, is back as Godzilla Jr., mutated by the nuclear explosion of his home island. Um, anything else we really, really need to. To, to speed through on that yeah. plot. Not really. Um, Super X 3. Is, it's is, got loads of freezing weapons. And, and is launched and used. And like the Super X weapons just get less and less interesting with each film. Yeah. The first one was basically a floating fortress, which was super cool. And at this point, it's basically a, a big it's, plane. It's a fat plane. It's a plane, it's yeah. A, it's a fat plane. Like, <laughs> I'm, it's a thick plane. <laughs> 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 X3 is one thick bit. <laughs> um... <laughs> And so it's Godzilla's final showdown. Yeah, with, with, with Destroyer, with this energy creature. And, kind you of know, it. it's I, I I like the idea of you know Godzilla's final showdown is against the personification of the Oxygen Destroyer. Yeah, but it's really not executed very well at all. Like the idea is not brought to fruition well. Not in my opinion. In your humble and opinion, no. Stephen, <laughs> takes two to tangle. But here. what do I know? You know nothing. <laughs> I'm going to surpass you. I'm going to be the pro soon. Because <laughs> I know, I know they, actors' they names. Then we'll re-review them I can all. Re, I, can, I can definitely remember the names of characters, place names, car- uh, actors, producers, and uh, what happened in each film. Yeah. I, I always remember what happened like, in the films. name one character in this after. movie that was not Miki Seguza. <laughs> or a monster. Um... Emiko Yamani, played by Emiko. Momoko Kochi again mm-hmm. from the original. Yes. Um, so, one of, one of the few highlights of the Shall movie. we get to the important part, which is what I think? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ross, what did you think of 1995's Godzilla vs. Destroya? So, um, so I, I enjoyed this one. Um, it's a downer. It ends on a downer note. I actually really enjoyed the ending. Um, this film, I, I, I thought it was entertaining, yeah. I, I would agree that it was a cut about, above some of the other ones that we've seen in these this this past little run. So whereas maybe before I've said somewhere a little on the, on the heavy, boring side or just thoroughly uncreative, I actually... While I don't think this film w- was particularly, for me, electrifying, I actually did appreciate that it was doing some interesting things. Yeah. And it was attempting to go back to Godzilla. I think... Some of the most effective Godzilla films are the ones that kind of go back to the original and uh, and kind of build on it. Like yeah. I liked uh, the other, you know, what was that that kind of new of the Godzilla ones? Was it Return of Godzilla? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the one where it's just it was just him. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. I th- I think attempts to kind of go back and examine and talk about and I, I, I look at themes that the first movie explored tend to end up quite successful. So in the end, what I enjoyed, but before talking about any you know specific things in this film, ultimately I, I, I did enjoy this movie's trying to again talk about big themes about uh, the use of nuclear weapons and less so the actual use of nuclear weapons and more about the scientific kind of eth- 
the ethical nature of like using nuclear energy and, yeah. and, and researching with these things and to the 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 morality of of actually going further with this kind of energy and going further with this kind of um, fucking scientific thing. So it's not quite quote unquote the dangers of nuclear energy or anything about that, but the dangers of, of misuse and mishandling and ultimately um, using of weapons. Uh, of, of kind of nuclear energy yeah. and, and, and things that maybe perhaps we shouldn't meddle with and it's as always kind of mentioned quite distinctly at the end of the film um, the characters you know quite literally say something like that about how we've misused and mismanaged yeah. energy and have not been careful with it and it kind of brings up through the the, the scientists that sort of rehashing um, the original Dr. Serzawa's uh, work um you get this this obvious little discussion about should we be doing things just because we can? Should we be yeah. utilising things that are potentially deeply harmful, deeply destructive, and that we ultimately don't have much of a control over? Because the opening of this movie is just Godzilla all spiced up, all hot and rare to go, <laughs> all, all orange and glowing, and and right away you see him in that zone. Yeah. The, the, the sort of status quo for the movie is right off the bat, Godzilla is imbued with like heavy nuclear energy he has been like really there's another nuclear test or another nuclear explosion if i'm right on a nearby island yeah that this is the island that godzilla and his son were living on in the previous movie and stuff uh, and that's it's blown up blown it's been, up it's been bombed or, uh, or, or a nuclear explosion and it's uh, again oh the inference is that it was godzilla's it was Godzilla who right, destroyed the, the, the island. Feed, yeah, yeah like, accidentally. Feeding, yeah, or accidentally or, and now or not, imbued. Yeah, so you... It, I mean, the main focus of this movie and the main like kind of through line is that Godzilla's heating up. Godzilla is melting down. If his yeah. temperature, his core body temperature reaches a certain point, then he will explode and he will cause like massive devastation. So you have, again, things that now, even years later, we can look at quite clearly... I mean, obviously, Shin Godzilla uh, was a film that kind of harkened back to Fukushima and, and the kind of fairly recent earthquake. But you can see even those same worries and concerns in this movie as well. Yeah. Um, so another thing I want to talk about, just while we're, we're talking about hot, warm Godzilla, <laughs> spicy boy Godzilla is the official <laughs> fan term, I'm told. Uh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> spicy G. Um really loved that that look i mean i i thought that was an interesting thing to do with godzilla it's almost he's, he's a little bit more souped up a little more more advanced and you see things that he does in this film that having just watched shin godzilla it's clear actually there's a big um influence drawn from this particular film uh -huh, in yeah. the way godzilla in his is look, yeah watching this film i don't actually understand how people that then how people can't like Godzilla in Shin Godzilla. I, I don't understand how people can look at that design and go, it's nothing like it. It's unrealistic because it actually has such a close similarity to this Godzilla. Uh -huh. um, the, the sort of glowingness, the more like kind of gnarly look, quite chubby legs again, the thick legs. Um, but yeah, I mean, even the, 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 the way he like hunkers down and the, the bolts of energy are ripping out near the end of the film, that, that happens in Shin Godzilla yeah, as yeah. well. Um, so, costuming, actually, really like that Godzilla. Um, Destroyer, eh, crab monster. Yeah, there's potential there. Like, it's interesting how many forms it goes through, and in, in that sense, it's reminiscent of Hedra. But, there's... <sighs> Destroyer, all his designs, or well, its designs, look really, really good, and they're effective, but they're not used effectively. Like, the when we first see Destroyer, which is sort of the, the man-sized form, it's it's completely wasted in an over-long, poorly edited rip-off of Aliens sequence. Yeah. And that sequence goes on and on and on. And then, you know... When there's meant to be a big massive attack on this this form of destroyer or the destroyers, mm -hmm. um, a huge military effort, we, 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 we go to we cut to long long distance shots of big landscapes and it's just literally like six, six inch vinyl bandai toys <laughs> being scooted around the set. This is a movie made in nineteen ninety five. Like 
Honda Ter- and Subaraya and John Fukuda and Ted Yushi Nakano were doing better fucking stuff than that 20, 30, 40 years before this. And it's just, it's just, this is, I'm getting spiced up really quickly this yeah, time. Yeah, we're going to get you spiced up yeah. later. We're going to put a pause yeah. in your spice soon. Yeah. But just, like I've been seeing in the last few, these are the Godzilla films I would not show people yeah. to get them into it. These are not the ones you show yeah. to to introduce people to the series. I mean, you have a point there. If, I, if these were the films that I was watching, first of all, I don't know if there'd be a podcast, guys. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah these are the ones. <laughs> Ironically, these ones made in the, in the 90s that, that a certain generation or certain faction of fans hold in indescribably high esteem these are the ones that live most up to the big negative stereotypes of Godzilla films. Yeah. To me. Like that that's I'm not wholly condemning these movies because the stereotypes are still unfair when applied to even these movies. But these are the ones that most adhere to all the negative things you hear about Godzilla movies. That it's just monsters fighting each other. And they're all the same. And it's just these movies these ones are just boring. That's it. They're a lot they're, boring. They're all the fucking same. <laughs> like from even even Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, which was my first Godzilla movie, so you know I'm a little bit biased towards it, but at least it was doing big mental high concept stuff. It was trying to do time travel. And that, that film was all over the fucking place. It tries to it tries to do mm. loads. But from then onwards, there's just there's no fucking effort. Yeah. I would say this one uh, actually, for me, has good ideas. Again, it, it comes down to proper uh, execution, and I don't think anything is egregiously bad in this film or egregiously sort of over the top or or poorly done. It again just comes down to there's just not that spark for me. Yeah. There just isn't that little fire. But there is actually a lot that I do like in this film, so I, I'm going to just run through kind of from the beginning. Go for it. A few little things I have because obviously we. Um, are introduced to this first fiery, spicy Godzilla as he's tearing through. Uh, you were telling me it's Hong Kong, Hong Kong, yeah. and it's it's a great sequence because it's it's actually a little different. The city's bathed in light. You, we often see things in the daytime or, or, or sort of big skyscrapers and things, but this is right through Hong Kong, proper beautiful bright lights and signage, and he's glowing as well. So you've actually got much more colourful Godzilla um, destruction sequence than you normally get. Um, the other introduction that I like is he's barely used for the rest of the film, but I actually do like the way some of the characters are introduced. We're introduced to the sort of college boy. Yeah. Um, he, that I enjoy. Grandson of Dr. Yamani yeah, from the gran- original movie. That's yeah. it, grandson yeah. of Dr. Yamani. I and mean, we were talking a wee minute about how there actually are these direct character parallels and, yeah. and reappearances from the original film in a second. But um, what I really like is that the, the G Force are talking. They mentioned casually that that a, a college boy has sent in this proper worked out research treatise on Godzilla that, <laughs> yeah. that, that they've used and I just think the concept of I believe the direct quote in our subtitles is it came through or it came from the internet from yeah. the, from, a, <laughs> from a Japanese boy I think is the quote or something to something that like effect. that yeah uh, and I love that because <laughs> These imagine these days if our big interna- international agency was just like taking messages from uh, we boys yeah going on people's like Google Docs and stuff ah, exactly. <laughs> looking for their essays people just but no people would just be tweeting them <laughs> horrible pictures and that'd be about it there would be nothing getting done um, G Force's Twitter account <laughs> but the whole reason that he wants to join is because Suguzi, uh, Suguza is mentioned. Miki Suguza, Miki, yeah. yeah, Miki Suguza is mentioned. Which, on one hand, it's like, oh, there's a girl, cool, I'll join up, is kind of lame and weird to do. That's yeah. the implication that I got. Because they have little to no interaction yeah. after that. But on number two, I was at least, I again, the one pleasure, of, uh, uh, solid pleasure to me is... is the reappearance of Mickey, Mickey Segusa, yeah. seeing at least a vague progression and, and, and continuation of her character. I, I said these films would be so much stronger. Fuck it. Make a five film arc about Mickey Segusa yeah. going through the ranks. If, if they continue on with Godzilla films, be cool and, and, and sort of veer into the elements of reboot. It'd be cool to kind of revisit 
Miki Segu's yeah. character. I mean, she's still working. She's still about. Yeah. The actress. Bring her back. That'd Bring her back. Awesome. I demand it. Yeah. Um, and we'll, well, in fact, this is probably my opportunity to talk about Miki Segusa. So again, I feel ultimately with these films, there is a missed opportunity to do lots with her character. We don't get too much with her. She yeah. spends a lot of her time with another younger... Um, psychic. Psychic. Yeah. That they, 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 they have uh, a few conversations. And, and the, the one that's fairly telling is... Um, you get an element that Miki Segusa now she's been in five or six films. She's seen a lot. Yeah. Um, she's relatively um, wizened to all yeah. this, and throughout these films, she's seen some tragic things, and she's dealt with quite a lot. Whereas uh, this new girl is, I just dropped my pen because I was gesticulating so wildly. <laughs> uh, whereas this new girl is fresh faced and excited. Yeah. And she talks about how she all she wants. You know what? I'll go back to a normal life and. We'll get married one day and have a yeah. house, and you obviously get this realization with Miki is that no, well, this is where you are. This is no normal life for you. Like yeah. she's seen far too much, and she's involved in this, and she spends a lot of her time worrying about Junior, worrying about the baby Godzilla. That yeah. for the most part they just call the little one, the, li the little one. And yeah. in fact, literally on a computer, it is called the little one. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, can you not come up with any other name? So um, like Meru and Miki can have a future together. Oh. That would be nice. Yeah. Bless them. Because <laughs> at, at one point in the film, they're trying to get, um, they're trying to lure, they're, they're trying to get Godzilla to come a particular place and they realise the best way to do that, unfortunately, will be to lure with Junior. Yeah. And Miki talks about how her, she can feel her psychic power waning. Mm. It's lessening. Uh, and what's, what was her name? The other ones. Meru. Meru. Meru, obviously, being newer, being trained in the States, still powerful. So they're together in the helicopter, they hold hands, sharing that energy, strengthening each other. Yeah. Calling out to. Um, Beautiful. And it's sweet. It's that, is, that is actually, no, that again is a highlight. The, the Miki yeah. scenes are always highlights. Yeah. They're a pleasure to watch. Both great actresses. Um, lovely scenes. So, yeah, more power to them. Cool. I hope uh, I hope they're together in like a future film. The Godzilla, <laughs> just like <laughs> the second most iconic LGBT couple of the Godzilla series after the two leads of Godzilla vs Megalon. Have I watched that one yet? You have, yeah. Jet Jaguar. So I took no notes during this film. Uh -huh. So I'm letting you lead a lot of the discussion. Lead the conversation. I can do it. Okay. I'm, I'm in my big boy, <laughs> my, my big boy uh, chair. Um, so. We have a few other things happening. Let's let's kind of go into the Oxygen Destroyer and the return of Amico and, uh, and this going back into the original film thing. In a way, this film, you know, they build Mechagodzilla 2 in 1993 as the 40th anniversary movie, even though it was 39 years. And then 94 with Space Godzilla, that was technically the 40th anniversary movie, even though there was nothing about it that was celebratory whereas this film that comes along in 95 41 years after the case feels more like an anniversary movie uh -huh. because it ties so much back to the original movie we have returning cast we have uh, plot strands picked up from the original movie incorporated into this um, and lots of connections lots of clips footage from the first movie mm -hmm. you know you should probably never feature footage of a better movie in your movie because you're just going to make me want to watch a different film while I'm watching. That's what the credits did as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Um, and so this film posits that when Dr. Serizawa used the Oxygen Destroyer against Godzilla in 1954, the, the, the Force... The Force Awakened some sort of prehistoric crab crab like oxygen based life form which ultimately becomes destroyer and you know and I don't know sometimes I don't really like when the makers of these films take it upon themselves to embellish the original okay like to the ads oh but yeah, oh, but this happened. It turned yeah. out that. Yeah, because I, I, I kind of like, to, 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 to borrow a phrase from Doctor Who, I, I like the, to see the original film and its events as a fixed point. Right. Like, 
and thinking, you know, oh, Doctor Serizawa, he he defeated Godzilla, but but he he unleashed a a worse monster. Yes. Did he I fuck? <laughs> it's. I, I'm not going to make the case. You know, oh, within the context of the movie, it's disrespectful, and uh, within the narrative, it's uh, bleh, and it's like, I don't know. It's just a bit weird to play around with the finale of that movie in particular. Yeah, okay, I have I get, a lot of mixed feelings about. I get it. what you mean. This is uh, this is kind of unrelated, but I was I, I was thinking about how sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you just shouldn't make a sequel, and uh, to me. Quite egregious one. This coming out this year, next year is Blade Runner two. Yeah, famous Blade Runner. But I haven't some... seen the other twenty forty eight Blade Runner. Movies. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, the famous Blade Runner with his famously ambiguous ending, or at least the the sort of yeah. mainstream cut and the sort of considered like solid classic cut. To do a sequel of a film with an ambiguous ending is. Uh, Kind of maybe undoes silly. that ambiguous. Aye, thing. maybe undoes well, that ambiguous. Thing thing. Is, I mean, ultimately, no, it doesn't. The film stands alone, but it does a bit, doesn't it? I, <laughs> I'm actually weirdly looking forward to Blade Runner. 20 I mean, I'll see it because I'm I'm not a fan of Blade Runner. Yeah, really. that's like, right. Like I'm like a, a tall. Really, yeah. I find it so fucking dull. It it, it, it it's visually it's beautiful. Uh-huh. It's magnificent, but. <sighs> yeah, no, um, we, we talk about this a lot. And I'm interested in the sequel though because it's not by Ridley Scott, yeah. who I think is a boring old man who got lucky with a few hits back in the day and has been writing them ever since. Fair, fair, fair. Um, fucking, he's been writing off of Alien and Blade Runner. Yeah. Then he got lucky again with Gladiator, and he's been writing those three. For his entire career. I mean, you're not wrong. And, yeah, I really liked The Martian. Yeah, I liked The Martian. The Martian was a lot of fun, but he's made a shit ton of films. And There are some stinkers. He got lucky with some of them. Yeah. And that's all I'm saying. That's... that's you leave you see that? um, his, his fucking Moses movie? Oh, God. Oh, God, no, called? I didn't see that. Exodus God. Did you see that? Yeah. And it was... John Turturro dressed up as a pharaoh. It looks like it's out of like epic movie or something. That's amazing. Uh, so yeah, making a movie a sequel to a film with a, an ambiguous or or or, or morally uh, questioning ending, mm-hmm. making a direct sequel. It, you know, it's it's it, it's it's a risky venture. Return of Godzilla in '84 did it, but they didn't. Uh, they they did it in an entirely different way. Yeah. They didn't. It's like oh, it's thirty years later. A new Godzilla has appeared. Yeah, exactly. And that, That's it. Yeah, it Whereas, built on it and moved off. This film feels the need to try and add on to and embellish the ending of the original with like, uh, no, nah, I can't be. I, yeah. I, I honestly can't really be bothered with that. And I think the idea of you know the oxygen destroyer having repercussions is an interesting one. Those percussions are societal and political and and things like that. They're not. It made a monster. Yeah, and but because they'll kill it, it's good. Yeah, it's all good. It's because what Destroyer ultimately becomes is just another monster of the week. Yes, uh, exactly. That gnashes its weird mouth and yeah. bothers Godzilla and, and, and hacks and slashes. Yeah, and, shoots and, beams and ultimately doesn't do much but destroy buildings. Yeah. I mean, even if it was spreading radiation or spreading, I mean, they they actually they show you. What the oxygen destroyer can do, you know, you see in a in an aquarium, the 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 night shiftsman at the aquarium is shocked to see the fish like shrivel up, and he does this yeah. lovely scream. Um, <laughs> it's great, but yeah, no. So really, it could have been much more interesting if destroyer had that kind of oxygen destroyer like, power. Yeah, exactly. Well, just what, or something just utterly horrifically devastating. What, that Serizawa would be like. Yeah. Just aghast. Like, what, what if these the this sequence where the the I don't know the SWAT team or the Marines or whatever go into this warehouse where all the sort of uh, man-sized destroyers are, mm-hmm. and instead of shooting you know these these energy beams and shit, what if the destroyers could just deprive a person of their oxygen? Yeah, or just deprive um, an area of oxygen. Yeah, and then just like slowly, horrifically. Kill a person, yeah, and like, like shrivel Tokyo, yeah. like like pfft, like how suck the air, like out of how it. those fish die in Serizawa's fish tank and in the aquarium in this movie. Mm-hmm. But destroy ultimately becomes a 
big monster with an interesting sort of almost devilish satanic design. Yeah, totally. Which but is also wasted just looks like on a predator just with fi- alien's tongue. Yeah, firing beams and it's got a lightsaber horn, yeah. which it occasionally slashes, slashes into Godzilla. There's nothing interesting about this monster no. that has such an interesting origin as the oxygen destroyer made flesh. Yeah, it's like a very special origin. Exactly. It's yeah. a very unique, we can only do it once, uh-huh. really got a count kind of origin. It should have just been a massive anthropomorphic oxygen destroyer with arms and legs. With arms and legs. Beating up God. And <laughs> speaking voice. Yeah. Um, I mean, you make a good point about, about what you could have done there. And what also could have been done, I mean, they had Emiko, right? Mm. Emiko? Um, Emiko, yeah. The, the, the girlfriend from the original Godzilla. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, the girlfriend it's yeah. not fair to say you know the, the, yeah. the, our lead or, you yeah, know, our, yeah. one of our leads from the original Godzilla film um, it would have been great to use her more yeah she's you know mentioned as aunt and she has she has one or two scenes where she kind of wakes up she's she's watching the TV she's watching this uh, her, her niece the, the TV host debate the, the ethics of, of the new oxygen destroyer system or the yeah. new oxygen... micro micro Yeah, micro, micro, with the scientists and she looks concerned, invites her over to warn her about it. Uh, you see her waking up in a cold sweat one night yeah. at, the, at the realisation of devastation. But how interesting would it have been to have her there as part of the main cast? In the action. In yeah. the action... And almost have it be a direct sequel to yeah. the original film. And like, what, what Emiko Carry does, on that relationship. Yeah. What's her relationship with herself like? How does she feel about Sarah Zawa and his sacrifice? Yeah. What's it like having been there, having seen that? It could have been really interesting to see her actively try to protect Dr. Sarah Zawa's reputation, his legacy, yeah. his work. Because what she's ultimately reduced to is, you know, the town crier yeah. figure. She warns the young generation, her, her her niece and nephew, to not tamper with this sort of thing, and they just fucking ignore her. Yeah. And she's not in the movie again. It would have been great to use her. So she's, yeah. To get her back, to and have her back. And, where and, is know. Ogata, who would have been her husband at this point? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, I assume their uncle. Hopefully. Hopefully. Oh, oh, it didn't work out. Who knows? Who knows? Unless she figured out too late that she had feelings for Sarah Zawa. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, that would have been interesting. I mean, yeah, that's it. Have Ogata, if he's that actor's cutting about. Yeah. Pop Taka, him in. Yeah, and... Takarada's always about. Yeah. He's, he's still that's about it. Akira Takarada. Um, but, yeah, so th- this is my feelings towards Destroyer, the monster itself. Yes. There are things I do like about this movie. Like, I think the design of Junior looks great. Yeah, I Junior looks cool. A- as, as a specifically juvenile Godzilla, teen, it looks... Teen really, yeah, Godzilla. Yeah, it looks like a teen Godzilla. He's graduated from He just young... needs a backward cap. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And a, a roller skateboard. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> the roller skateboard. The famous teen vehicle. <laughs> Favoured by teens across the <laughs> Across the globe, please. Um, I don't... No, what I was saying. I don't really have. Um, junior, yeah, no, the, the the junior stuff was good. Sometimes uh, there's actually some interesting stuff to get out of um, Godzilla having, you know, like a child and a younger, yeah. uh, and the fact that it's it's not the like kind of comic, cutesy Manila style creature, mm. and it is more of a, a Godzilla like sleek, kind of longer neck and head. Yeah, yeah. Style creature, it, it lends something interesting, and uh, and obviously when he's when he's gouged, when Junior is kind of like, yeah, I believe infused with with oxygen or yeah, yeah. Sucked, oxygen sucked out of him, and, and it kind of gouged in. It's very bloody, um, and is dead, is killed. Yeah, it's great. It's an emotional. That is actually a high point. It's yeah. an emotional scene for Godzilla. And you, you see actually, Godzilla mourning the uh, death of its child. And you see uh, Miki yeah. and Meru. Meru, yeah. <laughs> um, morning as well, and, yeah. and she says something along the lines of how she's failed him, or how this is the yeah. end, how this is it's done. Yeah, yeah. Miki just says this is going to be Godzilla's last battle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the, the, there is, it does feel like a finale. There's this element of finality. There's this element of it, things ending. Yeah, an actual, you know, a, a substantial, quite horrific death. Yeah. Of, of, of Junior, what, fat up, killed. Yeah. Well, death. What do you? Think of Godzilla's death in this movie. So ultimately, he overheats. Yeah, it he does o- happen. Yeah. can he does overheat, and the the self defense forces manage to contain it to an extent by you know uh, bombarding him with freezing weapons, uh-huh. etc. Super X three and all that, all that jazz, and ultimately his meltdown is contained. That is a beautiful sequence. The snow, the music. Yeah, that is actually that scene in particular is something that was fantastic was yeah. really good uh, and that that 
scene in and of itself, I would not say the whole film, but that scene in and of itself is is, is one that can is up there. I would say. Yeah, that it, death it, of it's a very nice scene. It's just a shame that that so much that the mixed context around stuff, it, yeah, yeah it, it precedes it. Like, I, I I've seen so many fans across all different generations say, you know, oh, they cried at Godzilla's death scene. It's so emotional. Do, 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 do. And it's emotional to an extent, but I, I've never welled up, yet alone shed a tear at this scene because the entire build-up to it is so mixed and clunky and all over the place that, to me, it renders any strong emotions that I would feel at this scene moot. Because you're a heartless yeah. bastard! <laughs> You, Where's your soul, man? Do you know what I mean? It's, no, I, I get what you mean. I, 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 it was sad that I, I wasn't, a, wasn't a well and up there. You, you don't have to invalidate your opinion, Ross. No, it's it's, it was a very good... because it's shit. It was a, <laughs> no, it was a very good... Uh, no, but I agree with you. I, I certainly wasn't um, crying. Because... I, I don't know. These movies have such a problem with their pacing and their editing. These films all needed one more go in the edit room. Because oh, yeah. in this film, every film does. There's... <laughs> every film that ever comes out needs one more. Do you think your film's done? Yeah, yeah, have one more, pass. one more, one more. Because in this, in particular, you know, you don't. Nothing is left to the viewer to assume, and I mean, even down to the most mundane shit. You know, like we see a plane docking, and then it's on the it's on the runway, and then it <laughs> goes up that runway for then ages. Like, then, in like the Super X three, we see its entire takeoff procedure, and the, the handsome guy in there with a cool cap. Yeah, and the fucking the, the 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 special forces weapons guys that go into the building to take out the destroyers. <laughs> we see every fucking single step that they take to go into that building Which and is- prepare and search and blah, blah, blah. and it takes so fucking long. And then at the end, when um, the the scientist and the the TV newscaster. Go, arrive in the helicopter to save Mickey and Meru. We see, you know, the helicopter arrives. Helicopter goes down. They all separately get out of the helicopter and they run over to them. They say, "Are you okay?" Run back to the helicopter. All get in the helicopter. Helicopter takes off. It's like, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> no, fair, fair. Um, yeah, like it's it's the same issue again. We don't want to repeat ourselves, but it's the same issue we have with with the other ones. Mm. We, we are in agreement on that to an extent, at least, as just as far as. I just want to see more interesting things. Yeah. just want to see a little tighter story. I want to see the human characters much more involved in the storylines again. Yeah. Um, I, I just don't think Godzilla's death in this movie is... I mean, yeah, it's it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an objectively... It's sad. Uh-huh. It's a sad thing to see. But it, it does not pull at my heartstrings at all because... Oh, I don't know. Fair. So much of what comes before it doesn't do that sequence yeah, I, justice. Yeah, I, I would say. I mean, that 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 is a, a fair point. It is ultimately. I will say. I mean, if you take that out of context and you watch it, it is actually yeah, a very good. But yeah. it, 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 it kind of redeems the film a little bit to me, but not enough. Well, see, that's the thing, isn't it? Because a good. A good ending, a great ending. But yeah, that that could, ending could, on a on a good Godzilla film, yeah. that would you know bring the house down. A, a great ending on an otherwise okay film can it, it can almost trick you. Do you know what I mean? Into yeah. thinking that you enjoy. Oh, I'm not. I'm not saying this is what happened with you. No, no, no. Um, but it, it feel like it almost trick you into thinking the movie was better than it was. Yeah, you have a great ending. And I feel like maybe that's what goes on a lot yeah. with this movie. Which is having a good ending is good, but you should also have a good beginning and a middle. Yeah, you should have a, you should have a good movie. <laughs> yeah, you should have a good movie. And ultimately, when Godzilla does melt down, um, Junior is revived. Yes. And that's like, good. like like Dracula and the Daleks and the Master. Godzilla's never really dead. Godzilla will return. Yeah. I know, and, that, and that, that sequence, that reveal was good as well. You're pushing through the mist, going back towards the city, back towards the chaos, and you, yeah. you see that figure. You know what's happening. Yeah, you know exactly. how it goes. Um, and the story of this Godzilla has never picked up again. Right, that's okay. Yeah, that, that, that's it. That's we, we, we we've reached the end of the Heisei. This particular set of characters in this run of Godzilla movies. Um, 
just want to see if there's anything else I want to hit if on. If it could that. be, is music. Yeah, it's, that's... It's undoubtedly the highlight of the movie. Oh, yeah. Um, the huge, bombastic, blaring title theme he does for the for the, 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 the credit sequence. Is, oh, it's brilliant. Oh, it's, Heavy drums, it's sort of low yeah. and slow, it's and it, it feels very inevitable. Yeah. Godzilla's coming. And the, the the reinterpretation of the the classic theme, the da 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 da, da that's yeah, a little yeah. slower, a little more tense, is it, probably the best I've heard it. And I'm actually familiar with that song because it's used in one of the trailers for Shin Godzilla. Uh-huh. I believe one of the the Funimation one, the US one. Sure, yeah. And that's a trailer I show to people that don't know anything about Godzilla that yeah, I yeah. reckon will want to see Godzilla when it comes to Glasgow on the 10th of August. Yes. <laughs> so. Um, We'll, well, get to well that. I mean, I've booked for Edinburgh. Oh, right, have you booked so, well, yeah. Edinburgh and Glasgow? Yeah. Is, it coming, is it coming to Falkirk? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. No, absolutely uh, not. <laughs> any Falkirk listeners? <laughs> yeah, if you're from Falkirk there, you should petition your uh, local MP, John McNally, or Johnny <laughs> McNally, to um, get Godzilla, Shin Godzilla get here. It's, it's a hot issue. It's a hot issue. Please email him. Yeah, Shin Godzilla. On our behalf. Shin Godzilla. You... Send him a link to this. <laughs> and ask him to get Shin Godzilla. Shin Godzilla, finally a year and one month after its domestic Japanese release, is coming to the cinemas in the UK for a one... For, for a limited event screening yeah. from the 10th to 13th of August. Right, okay, so it's a few days. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm looking forward to trying and just drum up a... F- support it, it's interesting to be in this you know we're a few years into me watching so many Godzilla films now and yeah, now exactly. that this new one's come out I can really actually rally the troops and yeah. get people that I know would well, while I can I know plenty of people that I would say wouldn't be that interested in some of these sure, classic yeah, Godzilla yeah. films but I know for a fact that they would be down because to yeah, watching a Shin 30 Godzilla. movie series is a big commitment oh absolutely and you go, oh well, by the way happy anniversary Oh yes! Two years. This two month. years. And two years. Yeah. This is going to be something like our twenty fifth or twenty sixth episode. We've done well. That's twenty six more than I ever thought we'd. And do. of course, we wouldn't be here if we didn't have our lovely listeners. And me. And you. But I mean, it was my idea. That, that's very true. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Thanks again. You, you listen. You. You subscribe, you talk to us, you send us messages. You, you protect, you attack. You protect, but you also attack. Most importantly. You got our back. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know, and, and, and yeah, we wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you. If, if we don't just want to be shouting into the void. Yeah, exactly. We love yeah. that you listen yeah. to us and, and yeah. have, share our fun. Thanks for all the engagement on social media and stuff. It's getting, it's it's slowly creeping up and getting more and more. And we feel very engaged with. Yeah. We feel yeah. very socially yeah. active. So thank you. We love to be engaged. We love to be clicked. We love those clicks. We it's, love those likes. We love those shares, retweets. It's been a fun, retumbles. It's been it's been a fun two years, and you know, hopefully many more. Yeah. Because, well, um, we're we're we're. we're Sometimes finding less and less time to do this, so but we're making it work. It, it, it just it just creates longevity. Exactly. Well, that's <laughs> it, and and we are in our final stages where we approach the sort of last few Godzilla films. But well, yeah, that's we've good. got yeah, some I, new I ones guess, coming yeah. up. We've got uh, well, we're now going into what's known as the well. Well, let's right. talk about what's next. For the the calendar, the okay. kaiju calendar. If, if we, 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 we can circle back to Destroyer. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come, come up, back to our summary and our, yeah. our final... Um, so, uh, Toho's Godzilla will not return. It's only a short hiatus this time, 95 to 99. Oh, right. Uh, Toho's Godzilla uh, will return in a film called... Godzilla 2000, Millennium. Mm. But before that, we'll take a detour. Oh, a, a, a meander, a to sojourn. Hollywood. <laughs> oh, I've never been there before. In the year 1998, and we'll watch Roland Emmerich's movie, Godzilla. And guess what? It's what? called Godzilla, and it's a Godzilla film, whether you fucking like it or not. I actually haven't seen it. I genuinely haven't. Yeah. I'm keen to watch it. We had a little chat about how we want to do this, if we want to yeah. do something special. Yeah. Um, this, this, for this film in particular, this might be a very fun thing to do. Yeah. So, we have talked about the potential of trying to do something live for this one. 
Yeah. We've not really worked it out. Um, and to be quite honest, we'd, we'd appreciate your input for probably the best place to do that if, if you would want us to just simply stream that through Facebook or if you'd rather we use something like Twitch or... Because or... it, it would be fun to to have a comments feed yeah, as, as exactly. we go and respond as we go and talking about the movie and stuff like that. And so, I mean, I mean, maybe, maybe we're way yeah. overestimating the interest and popularity of, uh-huh. of ourselves, but... Yeah. But we'll work out a time. It would probably be... Um, you know, we'll work out something. We're in the UK, obviously, so we'll try and work out a time that's at least reasonable for all our main time zones. Yeah. Um, all two of them. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, we can't, obviously can't keep everyone happy, but we'll, we'll we'll probably be doing it between about 7 p.m. or 10 uh, UK time. Our time. Uh, Greenwich our time. Mean time. Greenwich Mean Time, the proper time. All you other time havers are seeping time off Time wasters. Time, exactly, time <laughs> wasters. So, yeah, we really want to do something like that. So let us know what you think about that idea. That'd be fun. Let us yeah. know if you may have um, suggestions for uh, sites that we can do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and and we'll we'll let you know what we end up planning. You can expect that in the next couple of weeks. Or yeah, next hopefully month or so. we'll get that organised sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um. So you know, beyond, uh, Roland Emmerich's Godzilla, mm-hmm. um, we'll be going into Toho's Millennium series. Yes. I don't which... want to go too much further. Only tell me one. You've told me the next film. No, no I'm not. I'm not going to. All right, all right. I'm not going to rattle through all. No, no. The movies, but um, it's nineteen ninety nine. To 2004. Right. And then after that, um, we skip ahead 10 years. Legendary Mm. Pictures. Godzilla. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Which I have seen. Then 2016, Shin Godzilla. Dab it for baby. Then after that, if we wanted to continue further into, you know, Legendary Pictures, Monsterverse, Uh Godzilla, King Kong, Interconnected. Zones. Cinematic Universe. uh, Kong Skull Island. uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters, Godzilla vs. Kong, and then simultaneously with that we'll have the Godzilla Planet of the Monsters 3D anime trilogy. Yes, which are will be official canon Godzilla so, films, right? Yeah, well, you know, it's a theatrical film and it's got Godzilla in the title. Yep. So it's, a, it's, it's Godzilla good enough film. for you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm not a fucking elitist. No. So, we are men of the people. We're exactly, podcasters exactly, of the people. Exactly, the people's podcasters. The people's yeah. podcasters. <laughs> um, that is our official tagline now. So, uh, the future is bright for Godzilla and for the Kaijusaurus podcast. It is. We live in a beautiful age. We, we, live, we live in the future. We, <laughs> we truly do. Um, the first teaser trailer popped up for Godzilla Planet of the Monsters. The... 3D anime feature from Polygon Pictures and Toho Animation. It looks That's going through Netflix, yeah. isn't it? Uh, yes. Did I make that up? It's go- no, you're not, no, don't, don't you worry. I'm doing it's, well. Um, it's going theatrical in Japan. Then shortly after, it's being distributed through Netflix for cool. other countries. For us. So that'll be nice. We'll have Quality. instant access to the, the film in Japanese and subtitles and probably with a dub as well. Subs and dubs. Yeah, subs at and, once. Subs and dubs. They can live in harmony, people. Yeah, exactly. Um, subs and dubs. And the first trailer came out for that. And yeah, I'm, not, I'm not the greatest fan of a 3D anime and I'm not a big fan of anime as it is I like we were discussing earlier I, I can't just watch any fucking anime I've only yeah. watched one anime series all the way through and that's uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion and but it's a Godzilla movie it's a big high concept movie takes place in the far future uh, humanity has ban- abandoned the earth mm-hmm. because they finally realised they can't defeat Godzilla Godzilla has since become the dominant life form of the planet and other life forms sp- Spun off of Godzilla and humanity returns to Earth to try and take it back. Yes. That's a big, fun, yeah, exciting absolutely. story. It's a trilogy. It's a trilogy, yeah, which super lends itself to animation. Because if you're going to make the first ever animated Godzilla movie, why just tell a conventional story that could be told in live action? Do something that's, interesting. That's not to say this story couldn't be told in live action, but still, Japan doesn't have fucking James Cameron budgets. So... I'm glad the way to go. they're doing a big, high concept, super hard sci-fi story. Yeah, that, that, I, I am looking forward to that. Again, I'm all about the variety. 
Give me yeah, something exactly, different. Yeah. Give me a change. Let's try like, something yeah, new. It what, doesn't have to work. What could be more different from Shin Godzilla than that? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's that's the best thing to go from that to this. Spe- to take a leap. Yeah, exactly. Speaking and of taking a leap. Spe- well, I was going to say, speaking of Shin Godzilla, uh-huh. uh, G Fest was this week just of passed. Of course, of course. And, uh, co-director of Shin Godzilla, Shinji Higuchi, was there. And he spoke about the specific details of... Toho's licensing agreement with Legendary Pictures uh-huh. and how it can work with them producing their own domestic movies as well. So Toho um, having licensed worldwide distribution rights to of Godzilla to Legendary Pictures were able to make their own domestically produced live action Godzilla movie uh-huh. within a certain period right. between two of Legendary's films. Right. Godzilla and its sequel. Toho can make a film in between that. Right, okay. That was a stipulation. Um, so that's how we got Shin Godzilla. But now, because we're getting Godzilla 2 and Godzilla vs. Kong, Toho can't make another live-action Godzilla film until at the earliest 2020. Right, okay. Okay, yeah. so we'll wait a few years. Uh-huh. Um, just because that's how the licensing agreement worked. That's fair enough. Um, Shinji Higuchi said that if Godzilla, King of the Monsters, the legendary sequel didn't get pushed back to 2019, it's likely they would still be working on Shin Godzilla. Well, there you go. So, so we'll see. Yeah. And, you know, if Toho could only make one film in that time period, I'm fucking glad it was Shin Godzilla. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I because, mean, they hit it out of the park with Shin yeah. Godzilla. I'm happy to wait a little longer. And, yeah, exactly. I mean, who knows As what... we've seen in the past, maybe making a Godzilla film every year isn't a good idea. <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> But, you know, um, it, it, whatever form Toho's next live-action Godzilla takes, if it's Shin Godzilla 2.0 or whatever, and if, yeah. if Shinji Higuchi can talk uh, Hideaki Anno again into doing it, because he did do that the first time, <laughs> um, who knows? Yeah, yeah, but who in knows? the meantime, we've got the legendary, the Monsterverse films, and we've got the, the animated films, because that was a loophole that Toho... Uh, fully made you so they're clever <laughs> they, can, they can make animated ones as many animated that's great well no I'm glad it worked out I'm glad yeah. that they could still ride the, the successful wave of, yeah, of, exactly, uh, yeah. of Shin Godzilla and I think that's a smart move it means that they can they can test the water and try something different with yeah. these animated films but wait a nice long while before they make another live action yeah. get it right I- Follow the success of Shin Godzilla and maybe even do something different and it, it totally destroys a stupid narrative that's been floating around that people have been Saying that you know, obviously Toho are just happy to just sit back and and rake money in from licensing up the characters. It's like no, they're not. They're just still doing yeah. their own shit. Yeah, they they want to do yeah. quality original. So, pfft, filmmaking. So, Speaking of quality original filmmaking, the future's bright. What? Yes, the future's bright. The future's bright for for you, for me, for everybody. Speaking of quality original filmmaking, what did I think of this film? I've asked you that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking, I'm going to do it again. Speaking of quality original films, um, let's go back to Godzilla vs. Destroyer. So, I feel like we, we, I feel like we, we've rattled that can. I feel like we, we've talked through that. Ultimately, same issues as I've had with these films before, and I must sound so boring. I did enjoy. It. I enjoyed watching yeah. it. Um, certainly not a strong, strong electric film, yeah. but there, there were actually quite a few things I enjoyed in this, and I, and I did like the ending. I seem to enjoy films less when I watch them in the afternoon. I don't know what it is. We we had this trouble. We get sleepy. We yeah. were we were we did okay this time. Yeah, we were getting a little. We were flagging a little bit. Can I get spiced again? Because earlier in the recording, you stopped me from getting spiced, and I said it would come back to later. But I, I can't remember what I was getting spiced about. Just about was it about Destroyer and how it's not used well, and how it's toys. Yeah. And yeah, 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 yeah. Even even like it's big. Yeah, even right. Destroyer's interesting forms. The, the first giant form is just literally a giant version of its first form. So they can reuse the prop. and then <laughs> The big prop. The, the flying form does fuck all. Steven's spicy again, everyone. It, it Watch just, out. It just goes Watch from, out, it's it, happening. <laughs> let him, let Watch him out, boys! Beyblade, right? <laughs> Go, be spiced. He just fucking flies from here to there. Then, you know, the big fucking fuck off final boss version of Destroyer. This big, huge... Crab boy. Satan, lucifer Crab devilish boy. thing crabby predator alien everything in a blender and spat out destroyer it just kind of stands it yeah, stands it kind of warbles. shoots things at Godzilla and you know <laughs> nah yeah no I mean I, I, I must say I didn't actually I, I, the, you pointed out the kind of sloppiness of some of the models but I, I, I again I didn't actually find the effects that bad 
Cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> seems like cool. Um, but then what you, you did kind of nudge me and go, you know, look at that. That that that's pretty dire. Um, but I, I have at least seen worse. But you do generally make a point that there's a way to do this. That there's a creative way to do this. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, I've forgotten. I'm, about, I'm, I'm ready. I'm done. Oh, cool. <laughs> no, what was I going to say? Oh, fucking, I can't remember. It's the, it's the afternoon curse. It's, it's well, you know, so there's not much more to go on after Godzilla vs. Destroyer, the ending of that movie. They, like I said earlier, this is the this is the conclusion of this this incarnation of Godzilla this and this this, period. this continuity of these characters and this, these versions of these monsters. This is this is it. There's it will be a shame to say goodbye to my beloved Mickey. She's been Indeed. great. Yeah, and she deserved better. Yeah, in, in terms I, I, of her I character, would say, yeah. and it would be a pleasure to see her reused in some way in the future. Yeah, uh-huh. maybe that's a pipe dream. Maybe that's not where the the story will go. But yeah. that would be to me a newbie. Would love that. Shin Godzilla 2 should just be Crisis and Infinite Earth style and lots of different Godzillas from different continuities come together and maybe Anna would do that. Yeah, they all maybe come together he'd be done. To, they all come together to defeat he'd be Shin Godzilla. We'll, we'll write this up to him and send it to him. You'll he'll, <laughs> he'll, he'll listen to us. So, what do people think of Godzilla vs. Destroyer? This film's held in pretty high regard. Oh, well. Yeah, the, those I... controversial Kaijusaurus I... podcast boys <laughs> poking <laughs> underneath where they shouldn't be poking. I attended the screening of this film at G-Fest in 2014. Uh-huh. And, you know, being but a, a humble Scotsman, and if you want to go in the, the wider context of the quote-unquote United Kingdom, a, a humble Brit... Used to you know politeness etc and everyone staying in their lane uh-huh. that sort of thing. We don't rock the boat. We don't rock the boat. We don't. We certainly don't rock uh, cinemas either. No. But so I was, I saw this film at G Fest and I could barely fucking hear the thing because everyone's just screaming over it with like unabashed enthusiasm, and I I particularly remember one kid who was sitting a few seats along from me. It didn't seem to be with anyone. <laughs> just was, a street urchin I think he that was like, snuck into like G Fest. Twelve or thirteen or something. And he and he was losing his fucking shit over this film when the the big explosive fiery title sequence comes up. He literally was like holding on to his chair like it was a roller coaster and he screamed at the top of his lungs this is the best title sequence in the whole franchise and, and you were like uh, I'm just looking like do you want to fucking calm down a bit <laughs> son is anybody here with him <laughs> excuse me there's a boy here on and, his own and you know uh, like at first a it, whiff at first you know, as a novelty it was kind of infectious you know like yeah, yeah it's a fucking totally and then halfway through I felt like Sit down, everyone! <laughs> Calm down, I'm you're t- getting too riled up! I'm trying to watch the film! <laughs> <laughs> and, like, when Destroyer comes on, this Destroyer starts flying, this kid just goes, Oh, that's the flying form! It's like, I can fucking see that, eh? Do I fucking calm down? Can we get him in to do commentary? Can we get him on the podcast? If you're out there, if you're out there come kid, on the podcast. Then- if you're out there, you knew not whom you were sitting across from. <laughs> <laughs> the famous podcaster. Um, but the biggest thing... The av- we're the avant-garde Kajisaurus podcasters. <laughs> we're the uh, Hunter S. Thompson. We, of, we uh, are, we are, we're the gonzo. Yeah, we we're the gonzo we're, podcasters. We're, we, like, we are truly the bad boys of Kajisaurus. Yes, podcast. we are. <laughs> <laughs> are we going to get uh, leather jackets? <laughs> I think we are. In fact, no, I tell a lie. We are wearing our, our leather exactly. jackets, of course. Let's see, Kajisaurus boys. And we ride on one motorbike together. <laughs> No, you're in the sidecar. Yeah, sorry, I'm in the sidecar. <laughs> no, actually, fuck that. You're just holding on to the back of me. I'm holding on to the back of you. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Use your imagination. Yeah, Whatever. Draw it. Draw it. <laughs> send, <laughs> a, send us in your Ross and Stephen motorcycle pics. It's up to you who's driving it, who's on the back, or who's in the sidecar. Or it doesn't even have to be a motorbike. Could be just two sidecars send- and no motorbike. <laughs> <laughs> Just propelled by passion. <laughs> Send those on... What should be the official kind of the Facebook podcast or the, transport? Or the Tumblr? <laughs> what, <laughs> official via... With your thoughts of... We want to hear... The Kaiju Soros Podcast chartered train. <laughs> <laughs> the Kaiju Soros Podcast coach and coachman. <laughs> <laughs> the Kaiju Soros Podcast cruise. <laughs> Liner. Oh. Um, let's, do a, let's do a listener's retreat. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, one of those bikes that, that's, that's got eight seats and <laughs> everyone cycles them at once, and the bike, but one person steers. <laughs> it's got a branded um, one of those. What I was going to say is the biggest... Uh, the biggest negative thing I can say about this film, and it's not, without trying to be overtly negative or or picking at things that aren't there or whatever, I've seen this film, as with all of them, lots and lots and lots of times. And every time I rewatch it, I can barely remember a fucking thing about it. Because it just so fails to grasp my attention. And that's the same with Space Godzilla and Mega Godzilla 2. And that that's that's the saddest criticism I can make of these movies. Because when I was watching it again with you, I was just thinking, certain scenes I was like, I don't fucking remember this. I'm yeah. like, God, what the fuck happens next? Etc, etc. They're just not memorable. They do nothing with their... This film does fuck all with its characters. And uh, that that's that's a genuine sadness for me. Yeah. So that's that's what I can say about this film. That's where we're at. Yeah. Um but I must suck to be a lover of these films and have listened to I've the listened last to like <laughs> all the podcasts of this year. Uh, actually, you know what? Hope that kid isn't listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> well it broke his heart, maybe it'll have wisened up. Um but I <laughs> feel like, correct opinion. I feel like we're going into the wild millennium. New things approach. Sure I'm are. looking forward, I'm very excited, I'm going in fresh. I genuinely, genuinely have not seen yeah, so. um the Next on the Kaiju Source podcast is Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin's Godzilla. Mm, known, I'm intrigued. Known dispassionately, to put it politely, in fandom circles as Gino, G I N O, Godzilla in name only. Mm. Which, you know, it's fun for a while. Like when maybe you're a 12 or 13 year old, but you, when you get men in their 40s vehemently arguing on Facebook about a fucking 19 year old film. Give it up, Just lads. Give it up. Yeah. No, I mean, I'll. No, no, no. I'll save it all for next time. Right, save it all for <laughs> I'll next save time. Save it all for next time. Do you can do a direct address the camera rant. Yeah. <laughs> like Dr. Jacoby. <laughs> yeah. And Peaks, oh, yeah. absolutely. So let's have. Shovel your way out of the shit! Let's have a wee five minute. Um, what we've been watching, what we've been up to. Uh, we've, all been, we've both been watching Twin Peaks. Yes. Um, we are now, what? 10 episodes in yeah. the 11th one will be coming and, uh, like over I the said to you, I reached the point of frustration yeah Stephen's getting frustrated I'm a little but I'm, I'm still game I'm still down I will save my frustration till the end if I look back on this all and I realise that ultimately I'm not quite happy with it's pacing or, or with it's direction then I, I, I will admit the frustration at the very end until yeah. then, I, I'm holding out for the 18 episodes. I'm looking forward to seeing it all as a piece. Yeah, we're basically a getting a serialised film. That's it. And, yeah. it. and it does... At first, I was sort of resistant to that term. No, it's just episodes, though. You're just making a television programme. It's not a big yeah. old film. But there genuinely is a slight difference in, in the mentality of how you edit the scenes of, of what's acceptable to, to show... You know, it... it if a character appears in episode one and doesn't show up for maybe five or six episodes later, in a normal, in a television show, that's obviously a big long time away. But if you are interpreting something as a large 18 hour piece that's simply broken up and shown week by week, then that's no time at all. Yeah. yeah. So there's a difference there in mentality. So we've been loving New Twin Peaks. Obviously, don't want to chat and spoil too much of its specific details. This isn't the Twix Twin Peaks Thesaurus <laughs> podcast. But. Uh, are you guys loving Twin Peaks or are you deeply alienated by it? <laughs> we, Stephen and I saw David Lynch, The Art Life, uh, the other ah, day good, at yeah. the Glasgow Film with Theatre. Taylor. With Taylor, with our, with our, with our boy Taylor. Uh, and it's a documentary, Stephen kind of put it more as a, what did you call it? A not portrait. Like a portrait. Yeah. You know, not, not like a total fucking work, yeah, but it's a cinematic it's, portrait. It's not quite a, a, a biography or documentary about David Lynch. It, it is more a little portrait of David Lynch through his artwork, through his sculpting. And it's interesting because it reframes him for you. I know him as a director, but really he sees himself as a painter and an artist first and foremost. Yeah. And it frames his, his films simply as an extension of his, his visual art yeah. career. You know? And it was very good. And it was very, it was, very good. It was, it was oddly touching yeah, and, of, and hopeful. 
Oh yeah, no, absolutely. It, what I felt was it ends, you know, it's, it's David Lynch mostly just talking about his art style and the weird shit he likes to do. I mean, it was actually funny at points because just watching him really with, with severe effort in his face, really seriously, with a big canvas in front of him, just fuck with some gross, like, clay or yeah. dirt and make some this minging thing on a wall, but really just take care and effort to make sure that it's, like, f- clumped in all the right <laughs> ways. And he's just seriously, like, right up close to it, is doing this for, like, five minutes. It's very funny. <laughs> Um, so we watched that. It was good. Uh, I saw uh, Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. I felt that that was actually pretty good. Hate that Marvel films are all two plus hours long, and that that's how it that's is. That's where we are now. Yeah. But I must say, didn't feel the length of Spider-Man, okay. which was a surprise. And I thought it was a fun, funny film. I, I've I felt s- actually the humour throughout was actually very good, and it wasn't just. Hmm. Making, Spider-Man wasn't just making shitty jokes that weren't that funny. Yeah. I've seen Baby Driver a couple of times. You enjoyed that? Really liked that, yeah. Really. Oof. The, 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 the second hour of it, my pulse was just racing practically the entire time. Mm. It's, oof. It's good. Yeah, no, I, I yeah. haven't seen that yet. I would love, like to have a chance to. It's, it's kind of a difficult film to talk about without overtly spoiling yeah. it. Yeah. I think my mum's keen to see it, so I'll see if I can, okay. me and my mum will go. We tripped to the pictures. Is that us? Uh, I think that's us. Cool. Well, this has been, as it always and, shall oh, be. And always will be. The Kaijusaurus podcast with your pals, Ross. And Stephen. Uh, you can find us on all the usual social media channels, which links to which will be posted in the show notes. Um, if you know any alternative hosting oh, yeah. to SoundCloud, do let us know. Because SoundCloud's because going down like a sinking ship. It sure is, and it's looking like it might not make the month. So, so if you have any good suggestions for where our podcast should go, if any of our friends out there also have podcasts, we would love to hear from those in the biz. Or if you're a lovely person with hosting let us speak to us yeah we'd, so, we'd like to chat to you yeah so help us save yeah. our souls we're throwing we're, we're throwing a lifeline here yeah <laughs> the, give the kaijusaurus podcast boys yeah a home oh. to hang up their leather jackets <laughs> and park our more bikers and on that note of desperation we will say goodbye to you for now we'll see you again very soon hopefully maybe in real time that maybe would be fun live maybe visually for 1998's Godzilla and until then peace bye and- Testing! Oh, fucking Christ. (laughs)